Well, good morning. It is April 1st, Tuesday, the first uh, day of April. April Fool's Day, as some of you know, but I will not be going and pray, playing any pranks, although we pray the internet will not. Uh, yesterday, as many of you know, in the middle of prayer, um, the, we lost feed, and those are things that are outside of uh, my control. So pray that, uh, that everything will go well today, and if not, we'll, we'll pick it up again next week. Uh, next, excuse me, tomorrow. Well, first of all, I want to wish a happy anniversary, a wedding anniversary to Bruce and Jacqueline. Uh, congratulations on another successful year of marriage, and I'm happy for you both. Um, I want to remind you, of course, as we are a church that is united in prayer, that hope is not canceled, and there is that call for all of us this season to trust in the Lord. Our president said uh, yesterday, I believe it was, to the next two weeks in April are going to be very tough on our nation. Uh, I encourage you to practice social discipline, um, uh, distancing and discipline, um, because the bell curve greatly increases uh, for the deaths of Americans uh, if we um, continue to put ourselves at risk. And so I encourage you to practice your social dis uh, discipline and distancing. But it is also a reminder to us to trust in the Lord that we are all mortal. Uh, if anything, this Lent has been more real for our nation, even for atheists, uh, because we start off Lent on um, Ash Wednesday by reminding each person, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And this country has been forced, this world has been forced to look at our mortality and know that there is an end date, an expiration, and uh, we don't like it. We are doing everything as a people around this world to fight that and uh, to try harder. But my friends, the only, the only one who has ever and can ever defeat death is Jesus Christ. And so uh, I'm very sympathetic. Um, I have loved ones. Uh, we, we, we're all very sympathetic uh, to what's going on in this pandemic. Uh, but I do think there is a lesson to be learned about our mortality. And so may I suggest that we not panic, that we not get into doom and gloom because Easter is coming. And Easter is the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So it's a tough time, I, I know that. Uh, but I, I also want to say that God is with us and that he will see us through and that there is the assurance of the resurrection for those who follow Christ on the other side. Well, morning prayer begins on page 12 of the Book of Common Prayer. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and apart from your grace there is no help in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O merciful Father, for his sake, we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make peace to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us adore him. The Benighty, page 14. O come, let us sing to the Lord, 
Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves gladdened with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tested me, and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works, Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us adore him. We continue now with Psalm 75, found on page 364 of the Book of Common Prayer. And after the psalm, as you may be aware, we say the glory of Patri, that is, the glory of thee to the Father, and that's found on page 16. Psalm 75, page 364. Unto you, O God, do we give thanks. Indeed, unto you do we give thanks. Those who call upon your name, declare your wondrous works. Surely at the time which I appoint, I the Lord will judge according to what is right. The earth shakes with fear, and all that dwell therein. But I, even I, have made firm its pillars. I say to the proud, you should not boast. And to the ungodly, do not lift up your horn. Do not lift up your horn on high, nor speak with a stiff neck. For help comes neither from the east nor from the west, nor yet from the wilderness or the mountains. For it is God who is judge, and he puts down one and lifts up another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is foaming. It is fully mixed, and he pours it out. As for the dredges of it, all the ungodly of the earth shall drink them and drain them out. But I will magnify the God of Jacob and praise him forever and ever. All the horns of the ungodly I will break, but the horn of the righteous shall be exalted. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our lesson comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, beginning at the 32nd verse and continuing to the end of the chapter. Mark 1, verse 32 and following. And that evening at sundown, they brought to Jesus all who were sick or oppressed by demons. And the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick and with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. And they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. And a leper came to Jesus, imploring him, and kneeling said to him, If you will, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. And Jesus sternly charged him and sent him away at once. And he said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer uh, for your cleansing what Moses commanded, for a proof to them. But he went out 
and began to talk freely about it and to spread the news so that Jesus could no longer openly enter a town, but was out in desolate places, and people were coming to him from every quarter. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Come, O Holy Spirit, and touch our hearts and our minds, enliven your holy word, the scriptures, to us, and speak to us at this time. Speak, O Lord, and let us hear your words to your people. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to reflect just a few moments with you about our gospel reading uh, today, uh, particularly that part where Jesus uh, is healing the leper. But I want you to notice a sort of commonality. Uh, he tells the demons, don't say anything. They know who he is, we're told in the scriptures. And he tells this leper who he heals, don't say anything. And of course, sadly, in a sense, this guy goes off and runs his mouth. And the result of that is that Jesus cannot go out publicly now, but has to go out in desolate places, and people have to hear where he's at and come to him. It, it changes. He has to alter his plans. This invites us to think about that moment that, or that reality that Jesus does not always broadcast to everybody at every time and place, hello, I'm the Son of God, I'm the second person of the Trinity, come and worship me. He doesn't do that all the time. In fact, he wants to start off, his ministry starts off with one of proclaiming the word by moving about from town to town. And, and when he performs these miracles, uh, when he casts out demons, he, he says, don't talk about it. It has to do with God's timing. It's not yet the proper time, with what we call kairos, God's timing. And, and so Jesus is saying, wait. And we hit that timing a lot in the Gospels. About, and we hit that timing, quite frankly, in our prayer life. Because one of the answers to our prayers sometimes is, I hear you, I love you, but it's not the right time. Wait. Anybody who knows me knows that that is one of my greatest challenges. I'm not the most patient person. But alas, you learn to be because you have no choice. Well, that's part of it is this waiting aspect and, and God's timing. I want you to hear that as we reflect on the gospel, but there's more. Uh, I also want to deal with something that if you have a slightly different Bible translation, you might have picked up on. Uh, I use the English Standard Version, uh, but uh, those who use an NIV, uh, there's something that's quite interesting in verse 41. In my translation, it says, Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand. But if you look at the NIV and you look at that, you'll see it says, Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man and said, Be clean. There's a big difference between being pity, you know, moved by pity and being indignant, which is a, a response of almost anger. And so one of the things that if you look at your footnotes, you will see that some of the existing translations, some of the, uh, of, of the transcripts of the Bible, uh, the word that you use is translated in English as indignant. And in other manuscripts, we see the word pity. And there are people who are opposed to the scriptures who say, aha, there's proof you can't believe God's word. And I say, aha, anything but that. You can believe God's word. It's trustworthy. It's given to us. And in God's design, we have this tension between pity and indignation that gives us a moment to reflect on how that can both be true. Jesus first is moved by pity. That's uh, one of that's the, the, probably the most common uh, one that is used. And when we reflect on being moved by pity, what moves him by pity? The condition of mankind, the condition of this terrible leper. And I'm going to go into that in more detail in detail in a moment. But Jesus weeps at death. He he suffers with us when we suffer. And therefore, you will see time and time again in the scriptures where before a healing, we're told that Jesus is moved by compassion. Jesus is moved by pity. That Jesus is deeply moved because God cares. 
We do not live in a world that has been left alone, that God has walked away and abandoned his children. We live in a world where God has gotten involved, gotten his hands dirty. He sent Jesus to die on the cross. You can't get more involved in that. And Jesus continues to be at the throne of God, interceding for us. So God is anything but indifferent. So moved by pity is a very powerful word, and I, I think that adequately describes what's going on. So let's talk about the other um, variant that, that says in indignation. What might that be about? It might be about the indignation that, you know, sin, disease, coronavirus, these are not part of God's design. He allows it. He tolerates it at great expense, but it's not a toleration that he just sits back and says, I can't do anything about it. He sends his son to do something about it. But if you are moved by disgust at sin, if you are upset because, as we heard from our president, we're going to have a lot of people die within the next two weeks in our nation. If you're moved and upset by that, you should be. You should be indignant. I think God, I think Jesus is indignant. Because this is the result of Adam and Eve trusting the serpent and not trusting God. And any time you and I fail to trust God and put our trust in anything else, the result is usually corruption of good, sin. And that's a reason to be indignant. And secondly, he, as the Son of God, and we know that Jesus has more he has knowledge that you and I don't have. He can, he can see things. He knows things that you and I don't have. He's, he's fully man, and he's fully God, and there's a mystery on how that works. But we have times where we're told Jesus knew what they were thinking. We also say here sometimes that Jesus was surprised. Again, this is that great mystery. But we can know what someone does and still be surprised <laughs> at, by their activity. Well... Jesus warned and told the demons, don't say another word about me. He's God. He's the second person of the Trinity. Those demons might be in rebellion, but you know, he has the power to literally destroy them. But he reserves that right. He holds back that wrath of destroying every human being who does something he doesn't want us to do. And perhaps his indignation was moved by the fact that he knew that this guy who had leprosy, who wanted a healing, and Jesus gave him a healing, was going to betray him and go off and say, look what he's done, look what he's done, and it would be a hindrance to his ministry. And who of us at times haven't been betrayed where we've been trying to do the right thing and we've done the right thing and yet it's come back and bitten us? So maybe that's also where indignation can be part of this. But I want to close by focusing on that pity again, because I think, in quite frankness, uh, that's the strongest um, uh, text that, that I want to, that, that we can use. And I want to do that by closing, by, by quoting uh, from the uh, Life Application Study Bible, a little sentence, uh, excuse me, a little paragraph from the editors who've inserted uh, sort of a life application commentary, and they're talking about leprosy. You know, leprosy was incurable. And of course, there are other skin diseases that were often put as leprosy, but I, I just want us to focus on how severe it was to have leprosy. And I want you to think about some of the things going on in our society when we have, and I'm not getting involved in the politics, but I'm simply putting it out there for you to ponder. We have people who want to know where are the homes where people have been diagnosed as testing positive? And if I were a health care provider, an ambulance person, I might very well want to know that so I could dress appropriately as I go into that scene. On the other hand, I live in a neighborhood that can be very skittish at times, and I'm not sure I would want my neighbors to necessarily know that just so it could add to their fear and their skittishness. I've seen that play it out, and it's not very pretty. And that's a minor thing. Here's the quotation. Because the law said, 
that contact with any unclean person made that person unclean too. Some people even threw rocks at lepers to keep them at a safe distance. Even the mention of the name of this disabling disease terrified people. How astounding it was then that Jesus reached out and touched this man who had leprosy. The real value of a person is inside, not outside. A person's body may be diseased or deformed. A person's inside is no less valuable to God. In a sense, we are all people with leprosy because we are all been deformed and are by the ugliness of sin. But God, by sending his son, Jesus has touched us by giving us the opportunity to be healed by Jesus. And so I'd like to just reflect on that as we're concerned about diseases and, and appropriately keeping our six, six feet distance. But my friends, all of us have infinite value. And so let us pray and pay appropriate attention to the disease to the danger, but let's not forget the person, because they, like us, all of us are under a death sentence. It's just a question of time, but you and I know the Savior, and that offer of salvation is not just for Americans, not just for white people, not just for the educated or whomever. That offer of salvation from Jesus is to everybody. Turn to him. Repent of your sin and be saved. My goodness gracious, that's great news, not just good news. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue now with the Apostles' Creed. Page 20. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us, and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. The call of the day comes from this past Sunday. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what we command and desire what we promise, that among the swift and varied changes of this world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Defend us by your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor run into any danger. Guide and by your Holy Spirit we may do what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
O God, you have named one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite your prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings. Prayer for the absent. O God, whose fatherly care reaches to the ends of the earth, we ask you graciously to behold and bless those whom we love who are now absent from us. Defend them from all dangers of soul and body, and grant that both they and we, drawing near to you, may be bound together by your love, in the communion of your Holy Spirit, and in the fellowship of your saints. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. The general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all the goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. We pray you with such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant the request. Fulfill now, our Lord, the desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, this concludes our morning prayer this morning, Tuesday, April 1st, and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless you and have a wonderful day.